Hi everybody, Dick Coughlin. I wanted to quickly talk about a documentary I just watched. Um, it was on it was on the BBC. You can get it on iPlay. You can probably find it online. You're resourceful enough. It's an hour long documentary. Um, it was uh, done by David Baddiel, who, if you're not from the UK, he's a he's a <clears throat> he's been around for ages now, across about thirty years. But he's a uh, Jewish comedian, <clears throat> and um, and it's, the documentary is called Confronting Holocaust Denial. It's about him, sort of like. You know, he's always tried to avoid it, and now he's sort of going in and sort of uh, learning about it. And it's trying to sort of and you and it's weird because for me, I found it interesting because I've seen lots of stuff about Holocaust now, but not from the perspective of someone like David Baddiel, who's not an expert in it. He's not a debunker. He's just a guy. He's just a you know, he's a he's a Jewish person who you know it wants to sort of like you know it's, no, wants to learn about it. And because he's learning about it in this every, in this modern day context. You know, I sort of related to all the stuff because he was talking about websites that I've visited, like the Daily Stormer, you know, and um, and and he's talking about all these horrible uh, people online. He's reading tweets from these trolls and stuff like that, and he's sort of learning about it through, you know, through them. And he meets Deborah Libstadt and all this other stuff, and it but it builds up, and it, and then he, and then it's sort of like there's there's a narrative going through of like the the question of do you do you confront these people. Or do you, or, or should, he's confronting them, does that do nothing but bolster their enthusiasm or, you know, get more attention on them? And, of course, David Baddiel then makes a very good point. Because um, Deborah Lipstadt's lawyer said, why would you, why would you worry about debating these people or confronting them? Don't give them a platform. But then, of course, David Baddiel points out, in the modern day, everyone has a platform. You know, they've already got platforms already. They don't need someone to give them one like they did in the old days. And then... So then he goes, and that sort of brings him on to then Facebook, and there's this constant sort of struggle through it. And you, you think this is going to be about, you know, you know, should the, you know, it's about you know, a freedom of speech issue, and should these people be allowed? You know, yeah, they talk. He talked to uh, a guy from Facebook uh, talking about it because Facebook said that they would allow Holocaust denial on the uh, website if it wasn't hateful, because people could be wrong and all that. Other. And he's having this back and forth, and, be and being a comedian, he's sort of like very supportive of the idea that you know. Yes, he, you know, he, he understands that being controversial and saying things that are, you know, it's important for him. <clears throat> so he's conflicted there. And then he, he finally builds up the courage and he, he contacts this Irish guy. who um, And you can watch all it. This is, these are spoilers and that I know, but it, uh, you can watch it. And it's interesting. He, he finds this Irish guy who's a Holocaust knight and who is a nutter, you know, who. And I know you probably weren't expecting to, but I mean, like proper, like proper space cadet and he's like you know, and David Biddle tries his best but he realizes it's you know it's a waste of time and there's this surreal bit because the guy the guy said he would meet David Biddle but only if he could play one of his like Irish folk songs which is about you know the holocaust not being real and David Biddle was sort of just sat there watching this fucking guy play this sing this Irish folk song about how the holocaust didn't happen and and it's kind and it's kind of funny you know because like you know and it is kind of fun. And then it's just, it cuts to David Baddiel, like, downing a pint of beer. And then, and, and I'm sort of going through it, and it's, it's, I'm sort of not experiencing anything, but it, 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 at the end, oh, God. The end of it, it's like, the last thing he does is, you know, he, he makes the point, none of these people who deny it, they, they were, none of them were there. <clears throat> so he goes off to meet this uh, Holocaust survivor. She's an 89-year-old woman called Rachel Levy. Who tells him? Her, so he sits there and tells her. She tells him a story, and she was, she was taken away <clears throat> from her family by the Nazis and put in a camp when she was fourteen. She never saw her siblings, her parents, mother ever again. But she was in a camp with her auntie, and her auntie died in front of her, like just on the floor. She wanted. She was trying to get water to her. She tells a story about like the her body's there, and she's trying to get water to her but she's like it's useless and then these two nazi guards come along just pick up her aunt's body and throw it they just throw it on a on a fire and burn it in front of her and this woman's this woman's 89 and she's crying she's not telling this matter of fact it's not like she's like oh god not this again or she's desensitized she's 89 years old and she was 14 when they took her. And that means every minute of every 
day, every second of her fucking life for 75 years. She's had, you know you're not going to, you know, can you imagine? And she sit there, and I sit there with someone and I feel so pathetic. And I'm like, I'm 40 years old. I've tried to, I've tried to commit suicide three times. And like, this woman's there, 89, still there. And you just think, what was that? What must that? You know, what must that be like? What, what? What could she possibly? You know, what a fucking amazing person. I'm sorry. And. Uh, yeah, these fuckers, they get, people like, people who, yeah, these people who go on about the Holocaust, these, these cunts can't even handle it when, when they find out the new Doctor Who's got tits, or that James Bond might have fucking darker skin, or they've made this, they've remade a film from the 80s about these four people who set up this fucking, like, this organisation that catches these ghosts that are going running out with laser pack, but they've remade it with women, so let's have a fucking meltdown, oh no, there's a fucking, there's, there's a feminist online making video, and they have a fucking apocalyptic meltdown, and this woman's just sat there just like just just all the dignity and strength in the fucking world and she sits there and they get he's just like oh I'm, i mean i'm it makes me i would cry watching it and it's like and then you sort of and that's when it finally does sort of it i mean you do get it you know you know, we dance around this canard with uh, these cunts going on about freedom of speech and I have the right of my opinion expressing civilised and you just sit there and you listen to this woman and you look at her and you think, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you in the... I, why should... Freedom of speech... Fuck your bullshit. For, why should I give a toss about the freedom of speech of someone who if they had the chance and they nearly did, they'd rip it away from me and the rest of us in a fucking instance and wouldn't even think twice about it. But to them, they, they'll look at that little lady, there's an 89-year-old woman telling that story, and they'll sit here and go, that didn't happen. Well, she's a paid actor, is she? That's not real. That's who these people are. They'll see that, and they'll fucking say it's not true. You can't get more evil than that, can you? And I just, you know... But yeah, confronting her, oh Christ. Yeah. That's the real hoax, isn't it? It's the hoax is that, you know, these people have got so, these people have to create a fake genocide in order to make, because the, the only way they can feel, you know, the only way they can feel good in life is by making themselves into a victim. So they have to make out that white racism and, you know, is, they get racism on the same level, or men experience sexism on the same level as, as women do, or like, you know, or Christians are being persecuted now by gay, and it's just like you know what? Go piss up a rope. Why don't you fucking wake up in the morning and just do something you fucking like with your lives? You know, but if the only thing you can do is fucking do, if you can watch, if you can look at that and you can't feel every ounce of sympathy in the world, then fuck you in the up. Just piss off. You know. <laughs> Where there's no sense, there's no feeling.